As soon as war was declared on the 4th of September 1939, everything changed for so many people. The issues that were going to confront people on the Isle of Man included conscription, that's compulsory military service, food and clothing rationing, protection against air raids, blackouts, indeed an entire change to the island's daily life. The first shock for men and boys between 18 and 41 was the call-up, conscription. You were told to attend a recruiting office on the island and to sign up for compulsory military service. This meant being signed into a particular regiment, being trained and then sent off to fight anywhere in the world. Queues of men were seen leaving the island for war. Only those in reserve occupations, like doctors, farmers or police officers, that were vital for keeping the island going, were allowed to stay at home. The Manx Regiment had been formed in 1938, and the week before war was declared in 39, they marched off. Some 550 local men left the island to fight in this regiment alone. Throughout the war, the papers featured endless photographs of our brave lads, a great morale booster. But they also featured the other side. Hundreds of Manxmen were killed on active service, and almost every week there were sad reports of the dreaded letters from the war office being received, confirming the death of a son or husband. Their names were eventually inscribed on the island's National War Memorial on Douglas Promenade, along with those who had been lost in the First World War. There were those, of course, who refused to fight. They were the conscientious objectors. And to be registered as such, you had to appear before a tribunal and answer searching questions. Naturally, the suspicion was that you were a coward. And the tribunal took some convincing. There were very few Manx conchies, as they were called. One lad from Ramsey was asked the question they were all asked. If you saw your mother being attacked by an enemy parachutist, would you go to her help? He said he didn't see how he could under international law. You mean you would stand aside and watch your mother, who'd brought you up since babyhood, be slaughtered? Yes, he replied. After much talk of religion and the will of God, his application was thrown out and he was sent off to join the army. Though it was conceded that he should undertake only non-combatant duties, such as being an ambulance driver, which is what many conscientious objectors ended up doing.